Mary to return to push peace framework under Jordan's supervision. The IAF takes out a Gazan militant suspected of firing rockets into Israel. Canadian Premier Stephen Harper comes to Israel on first state visit, and Egyptians overwhelmingly back new constitution in referendum. Shalom. Welcome to the Jerusalem Post News, our top stories for January 19th. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry will reportedly present a framework for a basis for further negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians by the end of the month. Although officials in the Prime Minister's office would not confirm this, Deputy Defense Minister Danny Danon told Israel Radio Kerry will return to the region in two days with the aim of holding a summit between Prime Minister Netanyahu and Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas under Jordanian sponsorship. According to Palestinian sources, Kerry's new plan will allow each side to flexibly interpret the ideas in the framework as they wish. And Jordan would have a role concerning borders, Jerusalem, refugees and also plans for an airport. This comes after Netanyahu paid an unannounced visit to meet King Abdullah in Amman last Thursday, as well as Abdullah's meeting the previous week with both Kerry and Abbas. The Israel Air Force struck two targets overnight and an Islamic Jihad member in the Gaza Strip this morning. The IDF says the target was responsible for firing rockets at southern Israeli communities, including one last night and five aimed at Ashkelon last Thursday, and that he was thought to be planning future attacks. According to Palestinian reports, three other people were seriously wounded in a drone strike that killed the suspected militant on his motorbike. Israel sent a message via Egyptian channels on the weekend warning Hamas to stop all rocket fire immediately. Hamas reportedly then arrested several members of small militant organizations in the Strip in an attempt to to prevent more rockets. Prime Minister Netanyahu said today that Israel will maintain the quiet in the south by forcefully responding to every rocket attack coming from the Strip. Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper and his wife Laureen arrived in Israel today on an official four-day visit and the first by a serving Canadian Prime Minister since the year 2000. I tell you friends what I'm going to be doing in January, I'm going to be going and visiting the state of Israel, not just the bird sanctuary, everything else. Israel, like Canada, is a great nation. And like Canada, Israel serves as a beacon of hope in an uncertain world. Canada's Premier, a renowned supporter of Israel, is to be welcomed by Prime Minister Netanyahu and his wife Sarah in an official ceremony at the Prime Minister's office in Jerusalem. Prime Minister Harper is set to address the Knesset on Monday. On Tuesday, he will meet with President Shimon Peres, and on Wednesday, the Harpers will tour Christian holy sites in North Israel, after which Harper is to be given an honorary doctorate from Tel Aviv University. More than 98% of Egyptians voting in a referendum last week have backed a new Egyptian constitution. The vote advances a transition plan that the military-backed government unveiled after deposing Islamist President Mohamed Morsi last July. The total percentage of those who voted yes is 98.1%, and for those who voted no, 1.9%. The referendum turnout was lower than some officials had indicated, with just under 40% of the electorate, around 20.5 million people, taking part. However, this exceeded the 33% turnout in a referendum that backed the previous Islamist constitution under the former Muslim Brotherhood President Mohamed Morsi in 2012. Dates and details of presidential and parliamentary elections are expected to be announced in coming days. That's it. We're back tomorrow with more main headlines. Until then, shalom from the Jerusalem Post studio.